Play on the rails dangerously and back last is Hart Play about five lengths from the leader in a bunching field. They're starting to stack up at the 450 behind Operational. It's Operational only ahead to Rio Spark. Red Mercedes off its heels goes up three deep coming around the turn looking for a run flying Baron behind those into the open now Dark Miss and down the outside still running on Classic Ivory. Rio Spark reached the lead from Red Mercedes. No run behind them. Flying Baron here's Dark Miss. Pike looking for three. Goes up, grabs the lead from Classic Ivory. Operational Dark Miss and Classic Ivory. But Classic Ivory is going too well for Dark Miss. And Classic Ivory makes it a winning hat-trick. Well, Gina, I think uh, both uh, yourself and Lucas would get a, a real good kick out of that. Yeah, no, very tremendous to have Lucas back and uh, and uh, help Sean out with the riding of my horses. It's fantastic. That was a very good win. Uh, you were... Well, you made the uh, intentions clear that you were going to have the horse ridden back in the field today. He just had to take off at the right time to win, and I think it's a show of character with the horse. Very, very strong victory. It is. Uh, the horse has got the capabilities to to be a middle distance horse. I don't think he's a stayer, but you know, I think he'll get to middle distance. And um, we had to go back today. He pulled very hard the other day when we went forward. Uh, but I said, we told Lucas, just be mindful that we want to bracket creep up from the 700 and, and sort of be in touch on the corner because uh, that'd be too hard to reel in. How were you feeling halfway down the straight? Did you still think that he had enough uh, in the tank to get home? Oh, you know, he was no good thing, but uh, you just know he's going to keep hitting the line hard. And uh, the other day a horse got to him, but on the line he was going away from it. And, uh, you know, if that was another 20 metres, he would have won by another couple of metres, I think. So, no, he's, he's a very good progressive horse. He certainly is, uh, certainly on the way up. Uh, you touched on middle distance. What do you think will be his uh, optimum distance? Well, fresh, anything up to 1,500, it's nice. Um, the owner really likes staying horses, but uh, I've just got to... You know, teach him a bit more patience, and uh, it's very hard to do, but we'll do it. Um, um, a lot of Saver Bills don't stay. That's, that, that's the point of the fact. And even though this horse is bred to stay, he, he, uh, I think up to a mile and 1,800, this prep anyway, we, uh, he might only have another two runs or one or two runs, and uh, then we'll, we'll sum him up after that. All right, then. Uh, brilliant effort today. We'll have a chat to Lucas in a moment. The Purple Parrot goes around in the final event. He really hasn't had the best of luck this campaign. Yeah, he's his own worst enemy. He just doesn't have a turn of foot, and uh, he's got the job ahead of him from the wide barrier. He seems to run good races when he draws inside four or five where he can pounce up behind him and, and go with him. But, yeah, he's got the job ahead of him today. Well, Lucas might just be able to do the right thing for a uh, Paletti double. Well, he's done it before. Let's hope he and congratulations on the win. Thanks, Wes. Gino Pilati there. Let's have a chat to Lucas Camilleri. Get a quick word in with uh, Lucas. Great to get one back. Yeah, it's good to be back in town. And a very good win uh, aboard a horse that uh, is progressing. Yeah, it's, it was a great, great effort. He's got some ticker, the boy. He, um, he settled pretty nicely because he's quite a hard-going bloke and he settled pretty nicely so deep with cover and they just sort of backed off half a second at the 900. He wanted to get truck and I didn't think the ones in front of me were really going to take me into it. So I just sort of whipped around and and put him there in the pocket. Um, getting around the corner, I had a few butterflies, so it wasn't going real good. Uh, but as soon as I gave him a tickle around the tail, he just lifted a gear, you know, and I was just saying, just saying to Warren, he, at the 100, he was a beaten horse, you know. Um, the other horse was holding him quite easily, but he dug deep again, and he just sort of broke its heart in the last 20. So, no, it was a real good effort, and it's great to get my first winner back from Gino. He's, he's a pretty loyal man. He's been loyal for a lot of years, so it's good to pay him back a little bit. It must have hurt a little bit leaving when you did, knowing uh, what possibly could happen. Yeah, look, that's right. I, I always had big opinions of the horse right from the start, Lucky Grey. Um, but it's been great to watch him watch him progress. And, you know, a few people ask me, you know, it must have been a bit gutting, but sort of a month into my stay in Melbourne, my uh, father passed away suddenly, so... I just say to those people, you know, I'd give away the railway. I did win and have another month with him. So, you know, I made the right decision at the time and everyone involved with Lucky Grey is, a, you know, good friends of mine and they're great people. So, it's, yeah, it's great to see him get to the heights that he is. Happy to be home? Yeah, wrapped. This is home now? Yeah, it is. Uh, I've said to a few people that coming back here has felt more like coming back home than it did going to Melbourne. So, yeah, we're in the right place. Best of luck. Congratulations. Good win aboard, uh, Classic Ivory. Let's hope you can do it for Gino with the Purple Parrot in the last. No worries. Thanks, Wes. Lucas Camilleri back in town riding Classique Ivory to victory here in the C Corp Handicap. Good on you.